Hey guys, well, I'm doing the intro in the car today because I just can't get any relief from wind and it's just terrible. So what I want to say in this video is it is 100% feral pest control. Now, I'll show you how to incorporate dogs, shooting and trapping all together. And this is something I just don't do for the video. I do this all the time, guys. This is something that I always do and I push for. Now, when you're in a high food bowl area such as cane, macadamias, that sort of thing, you can't get choppers in. They won't eat bait. So dogs are numero uno. They are bloody up there. They're number one, right? Because you can walk around the paddock with a rifle and you might shoot one or two, right? Incorporate a rifle with dogs. You get a, Your dogs might grab one or two or bail a couple. Then you might shoot one that's flushing out. Bang. There's a bit more. Once you notice that there's a lot of mob pigs around, that's when you bring trapping in. You trap a, trap a couple of times a year and you have a success. You have a good success like I'll show you in this video. Now, dogs are tools. Dogs are a tool for my business and they are very, very useful. Now, I know a lot of people just like to hunt, that sort of thing. I'm a hunter by heart and I've evolved into feral pest control. And I know a lot of people that run feral pest control business are flogs, but I've always been a hunter and I still hunt now. I build traps and this is the best way I found over here on the coast. Anyway, guys, I'll just give you a touch on a few more things before we get into the video. It's a bit of a long video and I try and do my best to bloody make it entertaining for everyone, but it's a very cold and morbid business that I'm in, all right? So I, I have to be truthful and honest and show it, show it to you the way it is. Now, we've just had a, a federal election. Now, we've got the Greens and Labor in now. So very important, guys, now, not to post pictures and videos of dogs swinging the absolute shit at everything or rip dogs and that sort of thing. Just be mindful. Be very mindful now because Labor and the Greens are in. So pretty much everything's going to be under attack. Um, another thing I'll touch on when I build traps the trap you see in this video is an old old trap, obviously. But the new traps, I'll show them to you at the end of the video. Um, and what I do with people, this is not a sales pitch. This is something I do and genuinely do, is if someone buys a trap from me from Mariba, say. Now, a farmer rings me from Mariba and says, Oh, I'm looking to buy one of your traps, rah, rah, rah. I'm not too sure. Or they ring me and say, Oh, can you come in and do this? All right. So what I do, usually on the sale, I ask the person that buys that, say, if someone rings me from your area, it's the right to put you onto them, right? So what happens is I put the farmer onto the person that's bought that trap from me in Mariba, then them two can discuss a price for him, I'll make to trap for them, or they get a hunting block out of it. Win-win for me, because that old mate's using my trap, and, you know, I'm supporting a fellow hunter, getting a bit, a bit more country, guys. Look, that's not a sales pitch. This is something I generally do. Um, but guys, support me. Support me. Don't don't be a tight ass and go and buy, buddy, all this crap that you think that works off the net because it doesn't. I've ironed all the bugs out. Ring me up. I might be able to do you a better deal on our gear. Anyway, guys, let's get into the video. Bloody oars. Bloody wind too. this grain up nothing fancy here it's just a bit of three grain and a bit of molasses you don't even have to use molasses if you don't want to but I got one here that's ready it's about three days old which is what I like to do and I'll show you how I mix this one up that amount there that amount there sort of half a bucket it's a 20 litre bucket that'll swell up to about three quarters now that's good for about 10 or 12 pigs. Any more than that, 
sort of any more than 10 pigs, you want to do a couple of buckets. I'll give it a little bit more because I've got a little bit more to do. So that much will generally swell up to be that much. All right. And I only put a touch in here. About five and it's like what two cups? Two cups of molasses. Right, you want to go about two or three inches over the top of the grain because uh, it'll swell up that in a day, in half a day, like in 20 minutes to an hour. Then keep keeping the water on it. Keep, always keep about this much water on it. See this? There's about, you know, 20 mil of water over the top of that because if I touch this, all the gas will come out. It's all fermented up. That's what you want. All thick. It's all foamy and stinks. That's what you're looking for, nice and soft. See it's all sprouting, start to sprout, see it? Righto, try and leave that a day minimum. A minimum, leave that a day. But always, I try and have a couple of buckets ahead of what I'm doing. So, like now, I'll get another few ready, because that'll go out so on, so on, so on. So I want to be two days ahead of what I'm doing. So anyway, that's how I mix up my bait. Nice and simple, no fancy tricks. Right, guys, well, I'll show you. If you happen to be um, inundated by pigs and you need grain quick, you need to put yeast in it because yeast helps the fermenting process. If you don't have yeast, put one of them bastards in there. These bastards are green. They've been hot and cold, hot and cold. So it's a shame to put a bloody mango to waste, but anyway, you don't want to drink the bloody green bastard. Green mangoes are no good. And then just top it up. You can add wine or whatever you please to it. It doesn't really matter. But beer ferments it quicker just like yeast would. That's the only reason why I put beer in it. It's just to help ferment it quicker. <laughs> down the paddock here and I've been I've got some pigs feeding got a couple couple here but I just want to show you just in case for those who don't have trail cams and they want to put feeders out or whatever I'll just show you what it looks like how pigs leave it like they sort of get every last little crumb eh? but here I'll give you a quick look the camera and the owl the camera um, the owl is for the birds to keep the birds away but see, they're walking in from this way. And see how they just, yeah, they just sort of make a nice little spot here and they just feed it. I've been feeding them up here for about a week. And, yeah, they sort of come and go and they're still going in the cane here, chewing a little bit of bloody um, cane and that. But these pigs here, I brought the trap out. So these pigs here have been quite comfortable. They sort of come in at whatever time they please. And, um, oh sort of six o'clock and then they come back at eight o'clock and they always here for about an hour and a half two hours so i've been giving them enough grain to keep them here for that give them a good feed 
But in saying that, pigs are pigs and they want to go and eat a variety of things. But you can see here where they've been bedding. And they have been bedding here for a number of hours. Well, they'll come in at 8 and they'll come back at midnight and they'll come back at 4 or 5 in the morning. And, and each time they're here, they're here for, you know, quite a few hours. But I will say, I will say, a lot of people say it's so hard to trap around the cane and, and that sort of thing. But guys, persistence is the key. I've got sugar cane here. I've got nuts and mung soybeans over the, over the way there a little bit. All within walking distance of these pigs, right? Mangoes over there. A bloody macadamias across the road. You know, sky's the limit around here. It's just persistence, persistence, persistence. And I'll show you a few tricks on how to, to help with flighty pigs. I'll show you. Doesn't always work, but I can only show you so much. So anyway, we'll keep bloody, we'll keep going. So I'll show you how we set this trap up and I'll give you a bit of a rundown through it as I'm going. The cameras I like to use are the S Promise. Now we stock these, we got these in stock. And if we don't have them in stock, we order them in. Direct from the supplier, so there's no bloody bollocks. But I'll give you a look at these. I make these mounts too. If you want some mounts for your star pickets, hit us up. I got them on the website. I use rechargeable batteries. You can put a solar panel on, panel on it if you please, but I don't bother because I'm out here every day baiting the trap up. I just use rechargeable batteries. So much easier. But this is the setup I use. Everything here that you're going to see is available on my website. And we're slowly getting more stuff in. So guys, let's get to it. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase. Told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page. But I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave. Had to find a way to change. Had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I beat my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place, see Cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But Success is a finicky thing And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna let myself down, myself got that trap up so I banged a couple of star pickets in there just um, just in case I, I look you don't need to with the pins and that you just, I'd sort of just twitch the panels together and that sort of stuff but um, look you the, the new traps that we make you don't need to do that because everything's pinned and and everything like that this is just my old girl you know it ain't broke, so I don't, you know, worry about replacing it. And to be honest, every time I do replace it, someone buys the whole setup. So, yeah, I just keep using it. No one wants the old workhorse, but she does the job, so I'll keep running her. But, um, buddy, it's a bit warm out here today. I was sweating my hole out. But we got it up. I'll just show you. Now, I've only put the trap halfway between where they're feeding. So at the front here, they'll feed in out about a meter, meter and a half, and they'll feed in there. So I made a three meter line when I was feeding them up for the few days. So um, yeah, I want them to still eat at the front. I, I'm not in any way, shape or form going to, you know, expect to drop the gate tonight. But I have seen stranger things where they all go in there in one hit and you drop it and it's just easy done. But look, I'm in it for the long haul. It, it could take weeks yet, but we'll fill you in on how long it does take. But with the, with the new traps, right, we got um, the pins 
and then we've got like split pins in them so the pins can't jump out or whatever. Um, I twitch all my panels up just in case there's a failure because when I trap pigs, I don't usually trap for, you know, three or four. I trap for 20 or 30. So I make sure every point is structural when I design my traps and then I go a little bit more. It's just, I don't know, a bit of the cowboy in me. Eh? I just got to put fencing wire around everything. I just got to, even though, even though it's structural and it's going to hold, I don't know, I just got to twitch shit up. <laughs> hey guys, well, I'll show you how I set this thing off. Because it's cellular activated, I can call it with my phone. So I'll just quickly show you. Bear with me because my phone doesn't have much service here. So see these things here with the aerials and that, they do. They've got full service here where I am. You can use big aerials, we can do it with satellite, we can do many sorts of things. So if service is something that you're worried about, give me a call, old buddy sort you out. But anyway, I'll quickly just show you how I set this baby off. Right, my phone, I don't have much service, but my cameras and my um, trap does. So it might take a little bit, but I'm gonna find my bloody number first. Where is this bastard? Here we go. Calling it now. It's gonna take a bit. Now guys, that's purely because of my phone. But I'm showing you in the paddock. I'm not, not bullshitting about it. That's my phone. Because when I've done tests on these, they are with that camera and this gate and the equipment I use in premium, you know, best conditions you can get with big aerials and that, under six seconds. From the time you get the picture to the time you activate the trap in the paddock. But on average, you're looking about 10 seconds. 10 seconds to get the picture to there. Because time is everything when you're trapping pigs. Because in five seconds, a pig in there could balk and they could run out. So that's why I do that. But guys, as you see, she works a bloody treat. <laughs> bloody ass it does. Well guys, so what we're gonna do here is this is up, right? This gate is up. So what I wanna do now is I wanna spray it. I want to try to get rid of as much scent as possible, all right? I'm not going to achieve all of that. I just won't, all right? It's something the pigs are going to have to get used to. But what I can try and do is mask it. Mask it for the first day or so, so the pigs get comfortable. That's all we're trying to do. So what I do is I use a molasses and water mix. Now, sometimes you can use like a sea sol or a charlie carp. You mix that in there like a fertilizer. Just it smells fishy and rank. Sometimes that works, but use whatever. Whatever works, guys. The only way to figure it out is with your own stuff ups. That's how I learnt. I taught myself. You know, I've been doing it for a long time. I made a lot of mistakes, but I tell you what, we're one of the leading trap companies in Australia. So guys, my mix here, molasses and water, it's about I want to say about five liters in there, about five liters in that bastard, and probably a lit, about a liter and a half liter of molasses. Now you can add whatever you like into that, but all I do is I just spray along the edges, spray along the edges, yeah, around here, around there, yada yada yada, just in case one of my dogs are pissed on it. But when I load my traps up, I always wash them. I always hit them with some degreaser, bit of bleach, whatever, and I always give them a hose. I always do that before I bring them in the paddock. It just, stuff, you know, stops, I'll get there eventually, stops a lot of stuffing around with pigs balking and that. And this here is just another prevented, preventative measure. My bloody tongue is twisting today, I don't know. Maybe it's too much bloody hubba bubba. Well guys, that process is done. Now, 
depending on how flighty the pigs are that you're trying to trap in your area, you may need to do that every time you come in and put molasses and oh, your grain and all that. You may need to spray molasses and water around your trap and where your area is, depending on how flighty they are. Now, these pigs aren't too bad. I'm just showing you just to show you, right? I'm just showing you a few things in this video. Now, these pigs aren't too bad, all right? I'm not going to lie. These pigs aren't too bad. But different story when you add a trap. A lot of emotions run strong. So, you know, it's all well and good eating on the ground and, oh, yeah, we're just eating in the open atmosphere. As soon as you bring a trap in, whole different ball game. Especially if the old sows have seen it or pigs have seen it before. It can be very, very difficult. But persistence is the key, guys. Now, I'll run you through a few other things to uh, mask your scent, to bring them in, to attract them and that sort of stuff. Well, guys... This is the brew I'm using on this trap. Now, there's many different bloody concoctions out there, all right? When you start out, keep it simple, stupid. <sighs> so many people get caught up in all this brews and this and that, this and that. 95% of the time what I use is this, all right? Nothing else. Sometimes I add a little bit of sweetener, depending on how hard the pigs are and how flighty they are. Now, you can combat that by one or two things. There will be a dominant pig there, which will be a sow, always generally a sow. Sometimes it will be a boar. If they've, seen, if they've seen traps or grain on the ground, they'll balk and they'll, you know, stuff around with the others. Right? You need to get out there and shoot that pig. Shoot it or dog it. I don't care how you do it. Get rid of it. Because life is easy without that bastard there. Now, with this mix, is simple. Super, super simple. <laughs> it is just a three grain, three grain. It's just like a cracked corn. I think it's barley and wheat, or barley and um, sorghum, something like that it is. So I've got two buckets here. One, the longer you leave it, the better it is, all right? Don't go and leave it for buddy two or three weeks. You know, they still eat it, they'll still eat it. You know, but what I do here is I just put about half a bucket in of grain. I put about a litre of molasses on the top and then fill it with water. Now, you can add a beer or you can start the fermenting process a lot quicker with yeast. But guys, if you've got a bit of time on your hands, set three or four out, leave them a couple of days laughing. Now, this is what it looks like when it's been soaking, you know, right? It's starting to stink. All right, that's what you're looking for, the fizziness. See here, this one probably could use another day, but, you know, they've been eating it here without leaving it for too long. But the longer you leave it, the better it is. You look at this. See, it's all bubbly. It's starting to bubble up. You know, I'll give it a bit of a tap, get a bit more coming up. You know, that's it starting to ferment. That's what you're looking for. That is the best bait you'll ever get you know you can do that with any sort of grain you can let it let it ferment up but guys there's no point in doing this with half a bucket if you've got 20 pigs here feeding you're only putting five kilos out don't be a tight ass put 20 kilos out or a bucket like a bucket so these two buckets here is one bag so 20 kilo bag will do 40 liters once it's soaked all right usually i just put one bucket out a day but for instance, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two buckets. Because it could be a couple of days before they go in there. And I just want to cover my ass. So I'm going to put a bit out the front here. I'm going to put a bit out the front. And I'll put the rest of it in here. i put a bit, you know, I'll run a line. I'll show you how I do that. Just so the next day, if they only eat out the front, you know, I can choose whether to come out and put a little bit more out the front or just leave it an extra day and see if they go in. Keep my eyes out, there's a couple of serpents around too, the bastards. So I'm gonna put the most richest potent one inside the trap and the less soaked one out the front.
what I'm doing here guys is I'm just going to run you through some stuff that I do with temperamental pigs and so I've put the grain out like that right put a bit out the front and put a bit on the inside here now I've done it like that because I want the pigs to be comfortable at the front of the trap I don't I don't even care if they don't go inside here for a week I want them comfortable here now I do a couple of other things too guys which is old moles and pigs are sweet tooths they are sweet tooths and I have something here hubba bubba mate secret weapon when it comes to pigs trapping pigs shooting pigs dogging pigs hubba bubba I'm telling you they absolutely love it and the old girls don't mind a bloody lemon sherbet either you know have a bit of a suck bit of a chew mm. Mm. quite nice you know the old pig find a couple on the ground here and be like oh hit the jackpot here pal because pigs like to chew and they like to dig they chew the cane and they spit it out when it loses its flavor the well, same thing here the only reason I know that guys is because I was trying to catch a big boar once and I was just like stuff it. I had some hubba bubba in there. I had no sweet, no no tract. I had some in the ute. So I went and dug it around, dug it in the ground a bit, you know, in a few spots. He likes to dig. The boar come out and he's digging around, digging around. Dead set. He went and ate two packets I had spread around the bloody area. For about 20 minutes he was chewing it. He... I ended up shooting that pig. The only reason I know they keep chewing it is because when I had it, when I seen him, he still had it in his mouth. He was still chewing it when I shot him. And 20 minutes before that, he found one and he was like, oh, poof, you bastard. He picked it back up and he was into her. But the old sows, they love it too. So what I've done is I've buried a couple here. And I put a couple of lemon sherbets around and I put a couple out the front. I'll keep them for tomorrow if I've got to do some baiting. But I put a fair bit of buddy, a fair few of the old lemon sherbets around. They don't mind these bastards either. Or any boiled lollies, any anything. It don't matter, they're sweet, they got a sweet tooth. But here's some other things too you can use as an attractant. I actually just opened this and showed you what I do with it. It's just sweetened condensed milk, guys. Cheap as shit. Dollar a can. For that size can, what is that? 397 grams. I just drizzled that from here all the way inside here. Right? All the way inside. I actually prefer to use that over a lot of things. Actually, it's, it's sweet, it's nice, it's not too overpowering. And once you've got your fermented grain, you put him on the ground and you just drizzle him on. Drizzle him on, they love it. Um, you can use Milo or malt milk too. Um, this, is a, this is a product from town here. It's uh, made by Agricon Carasweet. Now, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, and I only use it every now and then. It's actually just a bucket because the stuff I make is inside it, to be honest. So guys, the sweetener I, I use is half the price of, you know, that stuff. Good stuff, but a lot of us are on a budget and hey, I'm running my own business, I run my own sweetener. It's something that I make, so I'm gonna promote. But it's not the only thing out there, guys. You can use anything. This here, the last piece I got here for you, hopefully you get a bit of a laugh at it because I find it absolutely hilarious. The old fruity Lexia, mate. Works a charm. I probably get all the greenies out there carrying on like pork chops. I don't care. It works and works well. Because when you've got pigs, when you've got trouble, trouble pigs, like sows or whatever that are balking at the trap, that are used to being trapped or had been around areas with trapped, the best way to get rid of them sows is get them pissed, mate. Get them pissed. When you see the old girl out here quivering her lip, having a buddy, bit of a buddy, a bit of a wine and a bit of cheese and a bicky, you see her here. She'll have a few too many. 
She'll pass out on the ground and she'll be squealing and hollering and carrying on. Go down the paddock there and blow her. Because she's the problem. Yeah, it might be cheating, but I tell you right now, you want to catch a pig in an area that is rich with food, you have to pull out the big gun sometimes. Righto guys, I'll show you. This camera here, you got full bars. And before, my phone had bugger all. Same with this, it's got the same sort of setup on it. Full 4G is what you're looking for. But, um, I'm doing here, I'm just setting it up. All these mounts and all this stuff you can buy from my website. You can um, contact me if it's not there or, or whatever. You can just pick the phone up and give us a call. We only supply cameras that work. We don't want to run apps and all this crap, right? Something I just, I hate. Uh, the owl, the owl's for the birds to keep the birds away. Well guys, the best way to set these up is get down on all fours. Make sure it's sending pictures to your phone. It's the best way to do it. All right, so what I do is I sort of aim it, uh, sort of get behind it. Screwdriver there, I think, all right, well that's gonna be roughly about it. So what I do is I tighten him up. Just the bees dick. All right, this point here. Use some bloody anti-fog, anti-static stuff for your lenses. You can use toothpaste, you can use whatever you like, guys. But, um, we turn the camera to on. Now, I don't run solar panels on these. I actually just change the batteries out when I need to because I can text command it and I can, I can talk to it that way. And I'm out here all the time baiting the trap up. But I do have a solar panel on here, on, on the gate, because I don't want to mess around with that. I just, just leave that alone. But now, I've got to watch out I don't stand in my buddy Hubba Bubba that I've put out. Now I'm just, I'm just waiting on the picture. I just, here we go. Let's see. Right, that's a, that's a picture of me buddy, me teat. So I'll go over here and I'll see what I can do. What's that doing, buddy? Bit of a dance here. You gotta make sure these bastards are right. Oh, that looks that looks all right, you know. Look. You know, that's not too bad. You know, you can see the whole gate. You can see a bit of sky. You can see a bit of the ground. You know, that's. Them cameras are cutting off about here. There's two meters in front of it. That's just how I set them up. I have my camera four meters from my gate, four to five meters from my gate. And these cameras are strong enough to pick them up at the back, at the back of these. So only the best here. All right, guys, I'll take you for a bit of a walk around the trap. I'll sort of show you how it's set up. I'll show you me hubba bubba, me lemon sherbets. I'll save me bloody goon for later. I'll see if I can bloody sort them out with some <laughs> when I try to trap it. I'll see. I don't want to bloody use it just yet. But I'll show you. So we got the camera here. So what do we got? One, two, three, four. About four metres. And that uh, sensitivity in that is strong enough to see at the back of this these traps. And these traps eight meters in diameter so i'll take you for a squiz lemon sherbet the hubba bubba bit of grain in front of the trap all right we got some hub we got some bloody lemon sherbet here for the girls bloody eyes and they, this is you know six six meters of grain spread out here all covered in condensed milk I got some bloody hubba bubba, you know, down in here for the for the fellas. Where are we? Here we go. Oh, here we go. Your hubba bubba, the bastard. Put that in there for old mate. You'll like that, I reckon. I might treat myself with a couple of them bloody lemon sherbets on the way out. But I'll keep them for the old girls here. You know, quivering their lip on it. Next time you think about buying a trap or any of the running gear or anything like that, 
come and hit us up because I'm not just sitting in an office or in a shop not doing it. You know, I'm not just a retailer or something like that. I'm in the paddock. I'm setting traps up. I'm hunting pigs. I'm in it with you. Anyway, guys, let's see what tomorrow brings. Hey, guys. Well, I've just come down the trap today. I'll give it a few days. Um, I've just been conditioning the pigs. So conditioning means just getting them used to it. And they've been used to it, all right? They've been in and out of it, all around it, everywhere, padding all around. I'll take you for a bit of a walk around. You see here. This is what you want. You want them comfortable. Yeah. Been feeding them up at the front. Inside, they've been everywhere. I'll take you for a bit of a look. All this is gone. In and out of here, no dramas at all. Been all through here. Been right up to the back here, right over the corners, all through here. Now, as I said to you, this is an eight metre trap and they've been all around it, every part of it. So what we're gonna do now is, now it's the time they've conditioned, okay? Now this is a time when I don't just sleep through it. When I'm conditioning the pigs, only a couple of days, I just, I don't worry about getting up from my phone, I just turn it on silent and just let them condition because I don't want them balking at every tiny little sound. Now, these pigs are comfortable here right now. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bait it up as I normally would, and tonight, if I can possibly get a drop on the pigs, I will. But I'm not too worried because it could take days still. But persistence is the key when trapping pigs in high food source areas. When there's heaps of food around like we are here, Persistence. So we want them to feed in there. We don't want them feeding and congregating at the front anymore. So put a little bit just on the inside maybe and then the rest of it all in the back. And this is really nice and fermented now. So it's going to bloody work a treat. Nice good line. You want enough space for all the guts pigs. Do a few lines, do one big line across the guts, do whatever. But you don't need to have it spread out enough because you're always gonna get a guts and you wanna make sure that bastard isn't stuffing it up for you. So. Now guys, depends on the trap, depends on the pigs, how you want to do it. But there's two 20 litre buckets in there because I want to keep the pigs inside the trap for as long as possible, okay? The name of the game is, I want them sleeping around the trap. I want them in laying around the trap and I want them inside as much as possible, okay? So <clears throat> what we do is we do that now we can spread a little bit of stuff around the outside of the front. But I've been watching them for the last few days. They sort of just come straight in, straight and go straight in. All right? That's what, that's what you want. You just want them to come straight in. And the only reason they pull up at the front is because there's grain at the front. So I'm not going to put any grain in the front now. And they may balk at that or they may not. I got something here for the old girls. Bit of a bucket. Might give the old girls a bit of a drink, a bit of a schluck. Yeah, you know, they don't mind a bloody bit of a wine in a bicky. So we might we might just whack her in here and see if we can't get the old girl buddy on the turps. We'll see, we'll see. We'll whack her in over here out of the way. Probably old. Righto guys. A little bit of buddy sweetener here. A little bit of sweetener, a bit of condensed milk. I'll just give them a bit of a sweeten up. They don't need much of a sweeten up. They're already sweet enough, the bastards, eating cane. Anyway, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Bloody hell. Oh, here we go. Let's go. The kid's running around on the ground. The bloody pigs mightn't like that. They might be a different scent to them, but they'll get over it. 
you don't need much she's pretty bloody good gear and being fermented too the grain it'll smell enough righto now just check me um um, box just go around my trap here make sure everything's up to my standard make sure everything's locked in and and what have you because from now on is go time if i can seize an opportunity i'm going to take it all right so the um name of the game is 100 percent if you want to get 100 percent of the mob in here but what i'll do is go home make sure i've got enough grain for tomorrow and the next day because never assume they're gonna go in all right, never assume. Could be a couple of reasons. Because I put some other stuff in here, different grain, they may balk because I've got different scent here. The kids come with me today, they may balk at that. So never ever assume, guys, that they're gonna go in on that night. Always be a few days ahead. Guys, I just need a break. I just need to tell you something here. There's gonna be so many people out there gonna say, oh, this bloke doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I'm a, I am a professional. And I do this for a living and I build these for a living. So I do know what I'm talking about. Other than some of these people that are sitting on the couch going, Oh, my granddad. Well, fuck your granddad. There's a lot of myths around saying, Oh, don't piss around the trap and all this and do that. You know, I wouldn't advise directly pissing in the middle of it. But you piss around it. If you're the only boat coming to this trap and then pigs are familiar with your scent, it ain't gonna bother them, mate. Now, in some instincts, yes, it will, so don't do it. I'd advise not doing it. But the myth, myth around it all is, oh, you piss around a trap, you lose a pigs. It's not the case. It's not the case at all, right? Now, the other thing is, oh, people will, oh, if you shoot pigs in there, no more pigs will ever go in there. That's crap. That's crap. Anyone that traps will know that's bullshit. Because pigs do not associate blood, their own blood, with danger. Unless you shoot a heap of pigs in there and they're all bleeding in there and one gets out. Then that pig will associate that with danger. And then that pig will become the, the sow or the boar that keeps everyone away from the trap in future. What will affect you from trapping pigs on a farm is if some farmer doesn't take you serious and keeps letting his hunters hunt it. If you hunt a farm with a couple of blokes on there, well, well, if he does that, don't trap for the arsehole because he's not taking you seriously, so you keep hunting it. Let him do the damage. But if your farmer is 100% willing, he will have tolerance for you to catch him. Now, for you to get 100% success, you need everyone, including them, the farmers or whatever, to keep away from it. Only one person should ever service the trap while pigs are coming here. And if there's ever two people doing it, they always have to come. Now, what happens is people come around, they keep hunting, they stirring pigs up, even if they've established this as a food source, right? What they'll do is the hunters will still hunt, oh, just keep one block away from it, they say. Well, you know what dogs are like. If pigs are here, the dogs are coming here. Now, if you, if you, guys, if your farmer's not going to support you trapping, don't trap for them. Simple. Let them sort it out. But for the farmers that are out there that want to help, keep your other hunters away from the traps. Keep them away. Just don't kick them off. Don't kick them off. Just, hey guys, we're going to try some trapping for a little while. We've got a good time of season. You, only might, you, might, you might only need to do it once a year or twice a year. And if you are one of these hunters that asked to get Keep, you know, keep away for a while. Just keep away for a while. You're obviously not doing the job, so don't get your knickers in a knot and carry on like a pork chop, or be the person to buy one of these traps. Because then you are worth more to that farmer if you've got more ways to keep pigs out of his crop than just your dogs or your rifle. If you can offer him a trap, dogs and shooting, and then even if you did baiting as well, that you, you're offering him four different control methods than one. Don't be a dinosaur and move on with the times. That's how you get country because I promise you, with something like this, you will get more country. Because the farmer on this farm told all his mates and all his mates want me to go and trap for them. Righto guys, I'm going out a different way that I come in. Now, 
Not because I'm going to try and mask my scent or anything, just because I want to check to see if the pigs have been, um, you know, moving on after they leave from my trap at night. It's blowing a little bit, so um, look, there's a water hole down this end of the farm, and the pads going straight down there and they're going straight out which is great because on the way in I was looking for new digging new chewing new wallows new footprints that sort of thing and the same on the way out that's what I was looking for but it looks like all the sign the pigs are coming straight to the trap hanging around the trap most of the night and then going the secret is not putting too much grain out and also not putting too little because you don't want them pigs going, oh shit, I'm still hungry. I'm gonna keep going through the farm, I'm gonna keep going on through the farm because you want them pigs to keep coming to you at the trap. So anyway, guys, there's a bit of a wallow just here, but I'm not concerned because that's straight through to the dam and straight out and never, never. So anyway, guys, hopefully we get some action. getting a few pictures in at the moment they've been coming at different times um, but first picture tonight they're just walking straight into the trap see that they're just walking straight in and that's how you know that's how you know you've conditioned your trap right you you've fed them up correctly now I'm actually sitting in the kitchen kitchen in me old Queenslander here's me me um, I'll turn the volume up a bit so you can hear it. I'm getting a few pictures in now, but they walk straight in, eating. Um, couple more coming in. A lot of just rubbish pigs. I'm gonna te I'm gonna text this camera now. So with the S promises, you wanna text them. Star 500 hash, just like this, with our cameras and our traps that we provide. We send I send it because I want to see what's going on. So I just text that and um, send a picture. Now, it's processing a little bit. The pigs are still there. Okay. So what I'm thinking is I might just drop on these pigs to um, get them out of the way, move on. Um, the option here is keep feeding them up. But these pigs are changing their times, they're coming to and from the trap, um, like they're changing their knickers. So these pigs that are coming to this trap tonight, I'm not getting a lot of movement because the pigs are sitting there on the grain. They're not arguing, they're not fighting because I've spread the grain out correctly and they're just eating. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'd love just to keep feeding them up for you and then get you know heaps of pigs in here. But I need to be realistic here too because I'm doing this for a farmer. I'm not doing it for my benefit. I'm just trying to show a few people how I do it. I'm just gonna send it another picture. Or oh, he's, it's, it's just sent me another one anyway. Uh, oh, there we go. It's just sending me, I'll just text it and one come through. A lot of crap, just crap. So, what I might do is, I'm just going to call this trap, I'm calling it now, I just wanna get them out of the way. And I can move on. All right, I should get a picture. In a second to say that it's all gone, everything's gone down. Righto. There we go. Look at that. All them pigs hitting that closed gate. I've dropped on them, if you can see that. They've hit. And we've got them so far. So good. Oh, no. This is just war getting a G banger.
I might have to put these pigs off for a minute and take care of them. <laughs> Hey guys, well I've just got to the farm. Now, what I like to do, there's a few things I like to do before I get down to the pigs. I, I don't like going down, getting ready at the trap. I don't I don't like that. I, I, I get ready at the top of the farm. So we're about 1,500 metres from where the pigs are. So a few things I like to get ready. I like to get my rifle ready, get it all out, get my ammunition where I need it, quick access so I can get straight out and into it. Um... And one thing, a couple of things I do too is while I'm traveling to the farm to um, get to the trap, I like to keep my phone, like I should say, I like to keep my camera on because if it keeps sending me photos and I keep hearing it beeping, well, the pigs are where they should be. They're still in the trap. When you stop hearing that, you think, oh, what's going on here? You know, something's happened or they're laying down. I just like to listen to the phone beeping or see it while I'm traveling to the trap. It's just something I like to do. I like to keep it beeping. But now I'm here, what I'll do is I'll send that camera, the camera a command just to turn the sensitivity to off so then it won't take photos of me when I'm down there rooting around. Now, what we do is get ready, you know, nice and calm. You don't need to panic. They're not going anywhere. Now, the best time to shoot trap pigs is at night. They are so, so much calmer. So much calmer. But anyway, I like to use a 12 gauge. Um, it's just something I like to use. Um, you know, a lot of people think that's overkill, but, you know, in my industry, by law, I'm, I, I have to use a 12 gauge or a 30 caliber. 30 caliber is overkill. Now, unless the government are going to give us, you know, semi automatic. Um, 300 blackouts like yeah we can get them but they're so hard now people can use magnums and they do use 22 magnums and that sort of stuff I like a bit of hit when I when I shoot that pig I want it to stop right because some of the pigs we trap have, are quite big you know and and they start smashing traps apart so the best thing to do is hit them hard hit them fast I reckon and I've never been a fan of using a 308 or something like that in a, you know, 8 meter in diameter trap. Like, it's just stupid. But anyway, guys, that's just me and that's just my opinion. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready. I'm going to just idle down to the trap. I'm just going to idle down. You know, just poke down. Just, you know, I don't, I don't need to fly down there. I'll just poke down and, yeah, hop out and just get straight to work hard and fast um so yeah i'm just going to get me me rifle ready i get my ammo in my pockets and, and whatever um put me boots on all that sort of stuff um i don't advise anyone on the, well on this farm i don't tell anyone until the job's done never start skiting that you've caught pigs until they're dead in the ground it's one thing you always need to learn and you always need to go by is don't make out you got a shit ton and tell everyone, all your farmers and that, until they're dead. Now, let's get ready and let's get down there. Right, guys, something I always do, I always bring two firearms with me because I hate getting caught out. I always bring a shotgun and something else that I can shoot a bit bit further away just in case there's something, you know, an old sow or an old boar standing on the outside of the trap that you may have missed or something like that. I just... And it's good to have insurance that you've got something else just in case you run out of ammo in, in one or something goes wrong. I always like to bring two firearms. It's just me. I just like to, to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> I, I got my trusty old electric earmuffs here. Great. Great for when you're hunting and for this sort of stuff, obviously. Now, I actually don't mind this, this um, Blackhawk ammo. Like, it seems pretty staunch, eh? It's 1,320 feet a second. And um, it's actually quite heavy. It's 33 grams, so it's an ounce and a bit. Um, and they're high brass, high brass too, so, you know, they're hot. The pig, nine pellet buckshot. Um, and obviously you can use, like, you, you can use clay loads and all that sort of stuff because at the distance you're shooting them, the spread on that MO is not going to be, you know, real big. So it's still going to hit just as hard as anything else. Um... Obviously, I, 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 you know, I buy this stuff in bulk, this buckshot stuff. But you look, if you wanted to use that at the distance you're shooting, that's it's going to going to spread bugger all. 
bugger all. So it's still going to hit just as hard. And, you know, they're, whatever they are, 28. They're an ounce, an ounce of lead. So it's not going to hit, hit hard. Anyway, guys, earmuffs come in handy. Jesus, they come in handy. Especially electric ones when you're hunting with dogs. Because, geez, you can hear them in the cane. The pigs running around. As you can see, they're not too spooked yet. Taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock Electronic, blow the sonic roof up I'm too honest when I take a few shots They're too toxic, need to take a new song You cannot save me Cause I don't need saving It's everything I've been chasing all here for the taking Don't wanna test your luck with me I think I've had enough disease I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are half done You are not as tough as <laughs> Anyway, guys, we've got 14 here. We've got a bloody couple of mob boars and a sow here and a heap of bloody slips. Good good way just to get rid of them because, you look, at the end of the day, you don't want your dogs grabbing them in the bloody cane here. Um, you know, how much of a pain that in the ass it is if you actually do hunt um, with dogs and that and they're grabbing, you know, this little shit, you know. So just a good way just to get rid of it. Get back in, you know, get back in the swing of things because these are the sort of things that are doing the damage. Everyone doesn't seem to think that all oh, these little things here don't do bugger all. They're still chewing and they're still banging and they're still breeding. Clean this trap out. I'm going to bait it all back up because there is a few odd pigs moving through this area. This is just one mob in this area. And so, what I'm going to do, the tactic here is set this back up, run a bit of grain at the front inside it. And then come out tomorrow night and hunt this all the blocks surrounding here. Pressure them. Pressure these blocks to if we hit up on anything, we're just gonna keep hunting and hunting and hunting until we end up down here into this shit. Then hopefully in a few days, pigs will come back. Because there could be um, other mob pigs coming in from a different area or whatever, but they all end up in the same way when they're pressured. Righto guys, I've got the trusty old cane pig, if you can see them. Cane pig, Queensland pig draggers. Funny, these are the first ones I've ever made. I've never needed to replace them. Anyway guys, let's put them to work and drag a few of these bastards out. All I'll do here guys is I'll lift this up, reset it, and it's right to go again. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster. Inside my palm, play with me like cats and a string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever wanna give me wings. You don't ever wanna set me free. You know I'm addicted to you. And it's twisted, you've been gifted with the evil voodoo. Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed. Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through. 
got issues in my head I like you in my bed, but you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something out of my stress enough from buying Australian buying Australian products especially when it comes to pig hunting or pig control or whatever because I'm here I'm in the fight with you guys I'm not in a desk in America or Germany or wherever else I'm here in Queensland Australia fighting the fight I'll just say if if you do have a farm out you know if you do have a farm out there and you have a few pigs getting around, hit me up. Might be able to sort something out with you. If I can film, if I can film out there, get a bit of footage, promote my traps, or get rid of a few pigs for you, well, it just might work out. Anyway, contact details are on my website. And if you are a company, well, contact details are there too, and I could do a bit bigger scale job for you. Anyway, I've got to stop gas bagging and load these bastards up. Anyway guys, what I'm going to do now is going to bait it all up again because as I was saying before, I will um, push, I'll come out here for a hunt and push all the pigs in the area back through this farm and back out into the shit. So, something I do because tonight we've got 100% success and you can't ask for better than that. But, you can try and mop up a few, few shitters a bit more. Um, and as I said, I'll hunt these couple of farms, push them back through here because um, a lot of the time it does work it does work and to be honest it'll be a few days before i come out here and pick it up so i might as well have bait in it what can it hurt because it does work guys anyway let's bait this bastard but i will say you got to start from scratch again when you do this you got to feed it up on the outside and slowly bring it in i'll show you so sit out here like that As you see, we just bait this back up and we start from scratch again. We feed them on the outside and bring them in. Because, as I said to you, what will happen is I'll come out here and push some pigs back through this farm, back into the shit. And um, it'll be a few days before I even come here again to pick this up. So I might as well have bait in it because sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, tonight we got 100% success. So that mob that was feeding here is gone. So... All we're doing is just seeing if when we bring dogs in or whatever that you know we can entice something back in there anyway i'll give you a look bait up like that again feed them in feed them in feed them in same same rules apply here and then i'll just reshape this just pull it into line double check everything's still together everything's fine i haven't dropped pins out um i'll just do it i'll give it a good once over and then i'll go I'll turn on my cameras and that back on, and I'll go. And the only time I'll come back here is if I've got to rebait it, or I'm picking it up, or I'm hunting it. Get on, get on, get on, get on. tonight for a bit of action we've been trapping a few blocks we've been trapping a couple of farms and um, I've been focusing on that but I've got a good feeling tonight we're gonna get some action so earlier a couple of days ago actually my old dog my old faithful he's about 13 actually I've never had a dog that's retired and died naturally so I was actually pretty happy to actually finally get one so um, hopefully we can go out tonight and jam something fairly decent in his honor because he's an old warrior and my old mate Cock here, he's come out for a bit of a look as well. And me and him caught many of decent quality pigs with that dog over the years. He was he was next level, that bastard. You've got a long way to go, don't you? Well, Molly, Molly actually, Molly was taught by my old dog Andrew. So um, she, she 
she's as good as Andrew now, but you know, she's got three legs, so the poor darling. Tony is related to Andrew, and well, not really related, related, but they got the same color. <laughs> but um, anyway, what do you reckon, Tony? You gonna get one? He's actually sterile, the old bastard. I had him tested and all that because I wanted to AI him. But I reckon he's had a hardy because both of them were on heat and then that night he died. So for some miracle, he might have got his shot his seed in and thought, well, that's me. He kicked the bucket with any luck. But anyway, Molly, what are you doing? Bloody earth, here we go. What's the verdict tonight? Cock, we're going to get something? Oh, hopefully we get something. Jeez, see that chest hair. She's getting a bit fucking wild. Mark my dog. What do, we, what do you reckon? Cock, we're going to get something? Predictions. Hopefully, hopefully there's going to be a big one, one of the blocks, so hopefully we get one over a ton. Ooh, ooh yeah, that'd be good. The last time we um, got a big one was in March last year. Went over a ton, it was with him. And I've been bloody chased my tail ever since, so use him as a bit of a, what do we call that? Um, a bit of a lucky charm. A bit of a lucky charm. So if anyone wants to come and give me, me cock a rub for some luck, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'll give me cock a bit of a rub tonight, so we've got to jam something big. I'll give me a fair sort of a rub tonight, and he's telling me we might get one around that 140 mark. Eh? <laughs> oh. Anyway, there's no plan tonight, I should have said. There's no real plan tonight. We're just going to drive around. It's been raining. Some farms have got 30 mil, some haven't got any, so we're just going to drive around and see what's wet and what's not. But I've got the gummies on, but I've had to, I had to um, tape me door up. I had to tape me bloody door up because it... Every time I get the lights, I beep. So if you're an auto lecky, dismantle that fucking thing for me, will you? Gah. Well, come up with a different sort of a plan. I'm going to hit a bit of cattle country first because I've just been rubbing me cock for luck and I've just got a different feeling tonight that I just thought, well, we'll check out a bit of cattle country and it's all blady grass. And this time of year, you're going to have um, small mob pigs and that sort of stuff on the ground. Or you're going to have pigs starting to cycle, getting ready to, for little ones. Or you're going to have the wieners. Most of the time I find when you've got blady grass around like this, you sort of get the pigs bedding up in it, but then you get the wieners, and then the mobs will sort of move back and forwards. And when you've got mobs moving back and forwards, you should have a good bore too. But look, all we're going to do is have a bit of a go through this blady, car, blady grass country and hopefully we jag something. We'll get these bloody moles on the back. We're going to get something out. Come on, they've had about 20 shits already, so you should be right. Oh, Jesus. Tony, you get up. Get up, you lazy bastard. Tony! Actually, I call it like that. I call it Tony! Because it's like a nagging woman. Because you've got to nag it to, get it to get it to do anything. So, I give it the courtesy of being a woman, so I nag it back. Bloody hell. Right, now we worked this block, so we come in. The wind was with us now we've swung around and we're running against mangroves and that sort of stuff and the wind's coming straight across the block that's what i wanted um so if there's anything down the swamp or in the in the valley here we should the dog should be able to smell it and get a jump right we just had a jump and we're just sort of we're higher in the ground the swamps and water back down here so we're probably 300 meters from that but we're sort of a bit on a bit of a hill here and the wind's coming like this, so it's probably the good spot to get a jump. <laughs> right, we're gonna head back to the cane because that's the way the pigs are gone, and it's gonna work well because it's just blowing in our face. So it's coming from the south, and we're gonna hunt from the north to the south. So the wind's gonna be in our face the whole time, so it'll, it'll work out well. Tony's definitely onto something. I'd say she's tracking that pig that we were just tracking in that cattle country. Because this is the way they always they come in here out of there. So I'd say she's onto that fella. Because it's just been raining, so she's got a better nose during in the rain. So we'll get down the bottom here and hope for the best. We just had a pretty good jump. Oh yeah. I 
heard something decent blowing, but. Dogs just had a scream and jump, and there's some good sets of tracks here. But I can actually hear a big fella pumping through this cane here. So the dogs have sort of gone that way now, but this could be something decent here. Because it is older, but he was pumping. This pig's floating, I reckon. I'm gonna go back up here and try and block him up. But I don't know when I'm gonna turn around. But she is proper crazy. Try and block this bastard up, because he's a fair pig. But I'm just going to try and stop him to go in the way I don't really want him to go and the way he's most likely to go. Dogs are 300 in this block. Now, I'll get up the top here and try and block up where he possibly will run because if he does go the other way, he's just going to go into like cattle country. So much easier to handle out there if he is a real big fella than in the mangroves. I don't know where fucking Tony is. Oh, what was that? Got him. She must be up him, he must be slowing down. Where's fucking Tony? Fucking Tony, mate. This bull's gonna cross. Let's get around and back here. He's gonna fucking blow here somewhere. Listen. Oh, she's right up him too. Good boar. Oh, it's a big sow. I thought it was a boar. She'd be the, that trap smart pig. She'd be that real trap smart bastard that's steering everyone away from that trap. Fair pig. Oh, put it there, cock. Here, throw me that, cock. Put it there, cock. Tony. You're useless. Fuck off. It's healthy, eh, cock? Oh, yeah. How'd you go with a cock? Oh, not too bad. How'd you handle her? Oh, all right. What do you reckon? How big do you reckon she'll go, cock? Oh, I'll go about 83. 83? That's all we got. Is she still touching? Yeah, she's still touching, cock. Fuck her. I can't go no more. <laughs> 91, is she? Yeah, pretty well. Just over 91. How'd you go with a cock? Oh, not too bad for a sow. Well, that just goes to show, giving me bloody cock a rub for good luck, it pays off. We nearly cracked a ton with this big girl, and I've never caught one over a ton. Big old sow, but anyway, it just goes to show, rubbing your cock is good luck. What do you reckon, cock? Fucking there's the evidence there. <laughs> Give the old cock a rub and... Ah. Get a lucky. Ah. Just a couple of guys messing around, trying to work out what's wrong and right. <laughs> anyway, we got this big sow and we got a couple of other shitters and all the pigs are heading in the direction that I want them to head. So we're, we're going to give it up now because they're all heading that way. We keep, dogs keep jumping and keep hitting, you know, keep hitting shit, but they're all slowly slowly getting closer and closer to that edge so they're all going to push out of there later um and they're right where i want them so hopefully in the next few days we get them feeding again right oh me and my old mate cock have come out and i tell you what here he is here look there you go cock oh, not bad but i tell you what everything's going to plan we've got a good moon out tonight and we've got a cracking moon and earlier we thought oh stuff it we'll go have a look for a prawn and uh, we've got a few prawns, but we've got a shit ton of mullet too. So they'll come in handy on the tooth and a few crab pot. We'll run a few pots or something later on with them. But I don't mind the old mullet. They're not bad to eat, are they, cock? Oh, yeah. But everything's going to plan. Everything's going to plan. The Cowboys won the footy tonight. 
I managed to drag a fuck and it's all sort of just coming into bloody into place. So what do you reckon? Cock, we're gonna get one? I reckon we'll get one, maybe. We'll get one. A few, mate. Maybe. A young Ron in here tonight. Ron! What are you up to, Ron? Anyway, let's get down there. Dogs had a bit of a jump. I thought they were just going out to loosen the bowel up. It's sort of working a bit. See? Oh no, there's a bit of bowel loosening going on up there, cock. I saw some shakaka happening out the front there. <laughs> bit of a pad, eh? Well, they're onto him. I was just going to say, they've just gone to the cane here working hard. I think they're onto this big fella. I think he's a good pig here. I reckon he'll blow at the bottom. I might start walking down that way, I reckon. I wonder if he has pumped across already. See if you can see any dew marks. Oh shit, fresh cane here. He been chewing here. Right over Tony's up this pig. I got Molly back and we're racing around to try and get uh, Molly up into the action because he's giving us a run around at the moment. So, um, just, yeah, trying to get up there and put her on a bit of fresher scent. Trying to keep her energy if we can, because she's only got the three legs, and try and help her out a bit as much as we can. So, we'll get up here and hopefully we can get onto this bastard. That would. dogs have gone again we just keep lapping this block because by the sounds they haven't all blown out this sounds like there's still a couple in here so we'll just keep lapping it and see what goes on seems to be a good boar and his lover in this block i think the big fella might have blew out but the little boar's still here i think so but he'll... she's still got it Oh, she's still got it. Must be little. Good dog. Good dog, get it. Get it. Get it, Tony, for fuck's sake. How'd you go, Ron? How'd you go, mate? Oh, get old Ron, you brick. The dog's jumped and we hit him. So we're bloody doing a bit of blocking action here. Come. Oh, yeah. He's heading to the mangrove. He keeps hearing us trying to block him up and he runs back in. Bastard. I'll get him. I'll block up, block up, block up. Come. Is this, this pig keeps staying in this block of cane. Every time the dogs get onto him, we give him a spell, lap it again, and um, they, we keep getting onto him. They keep hitting him and he keeps going to blow. So what I do is when I see him run that straight line up, they hit him, I run to the drive to the other end, block him up and it's been working. We've been hearing him stop in the cane and go back the other way. The name of the game is keep him in the block of cane because he ends up in the mangroves, he's gone. So, give him a break now again, and we'll just keep doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. Dogs have had a bit of a jump over the other side of this farm here, so they're working around a bit, so might go for a walk down there and see what's going on, I think. Bloody hell. There's dog up here. There he goes.
Bush is just in here. I don't think he's come out yet. He's just doggo here somewhere. Righto, well, we finished up. But a young Ron um, had a buddy bit of a look and a bit of a laugh, a bit of a giggle, that one. He didn't really do much this time, but he what he did do, he come in the cane. So that's that's a good thing. Um, last pig he didn't get in the cane, and the, the one before that I showed him, he didn't go in, he didn't even look at it. But this time he went in and had a bit of a bark, a bit of a nibble, and that's all I can ask for. So anyway, Ronathan, Ron, <laughs> anyway, cock, let's hit the road. Oh, yeah. Well, hey guys, I'm out here today having a bit of a bloody bow peep. Been a few pigs around. Um, you know, in saying that there's been a few pigs around, I'm on a neighbouring block to where I've got a trap at the moment and I've been getting a few out of there, so we're just really just mopping up the trash at the moment. There might be the odd one around, but in the area where I hunt, there's many different ways they can come in and new mobs can come in and introduce themselves overnight, just like that. So anyway, guys, we're going to get down here and have a bit of a squiz. Fuck it. Pig here, just here. I hit him too, I hit him. I didn't get the GoPro on quick enough. Big fella just blew right out in front of me, he did. I'm going around here to put a rocket up these dogs. They're probably chasing shit. I can go after him. I don't care. I'm blowing a bit because I took off after him. Not what, what I could, I, I, not much I could have fucking done. But I swing him myself, you know. But I'm gonna find these fucking dogs, put a rocket up them. And push him in his way because he was a fairly handy pig. Got our family, I shot that boy he run out in front of me, and the dogs, I don't know what they were chasing fairies, leprechauns. They were chasing him originally, I hit him and then he blew out and then I don't know what they they took off after his backtrack or whatever, but I found him. He's 45 metres in there, stand over. Fuck me dad, let me tell you. Jesus Christ. I don't know how I'm going to go get him out. I really don't. Try and get a photo of him in there or a picture of him in there. Run a thing to run a thing. Run a thing to run a thing. Ooh, got to do a week. Well, we've got our old pig draggers trying to give us a bloody hand. I don't know how we'll go. A good pig, isn't he? Good old honky. What is it, Ron? You prick. Here, come here, Ron. i got something for you. Come and have a look at the pizzle on him. Right, we've got our pig draggers here. We'll see if we can get him out. Might have to bring him from the head out, maybe. Oh. Let's see. Get him up. Go on the legs here. Go on the legs or on the jaw. You go either way. But I'll just try him here first. See how we go. Oh, yeah. You bastard. Good dog. Tear it. Well, I got that boar out. He went 86, 87. Well, we might leave it there, I think, because the mozzies are bloody really starting to set in and I'm shagged from going in there and getting that bastard out and that, that um, stand over. So, um, we'll leave him there. Um, we keep, we'll come back out another night and have a bit of a look around, but while I'm trapping, I don't like to stuff around too much, if you know what I mean. Like, I just sort of 
when I trap the shit, it just shows you that using your dogs and hunting as well as trapping is a, is a really good option for a lot of farmers out there. Anyway, guys, I want to go home and bloody watch the Broncos. Broncos are bloody playing tonight, so they are, they're sort of having a bit of a go, but hey, Broncos and Cowboys, I can't pick between them, so I sort of support both of them. But anyway, he's a good pig, so I might slip up and, and show the cocky and and um, get a bit of a pat in the back. Everyone loves a bit of a pat in the back, don't they? <laughs> Right, guys we're just heading in to bait up this trap here now we've, we've managed to get him to get eaten again but I'll just give you a quick rundown now all the surrounding blocks now this is where trap placement is critical if you want to do this now all the surrounding blocks here the pigs all run one way now that one way is where my trap is they all see to come they all come back through one farm and then back out into the never never country now my traps on sort of in between three or four major pads and they sort of come through this one block here and then they you know move on so what we've done is um i'm just driving in here i'm seeing a bit of bloody pig tracks and whatever but what we've managed to do is something this is something i do quite often is if i got permission to all the surrounding blocks what i do is i'll you know after i do a big trap here or before i even trap what I do is I hunt all the blocks and pressure them back to the pads, the major pads. I push them back that way. So what we've done here is we've dropped on the pigs and we've let it dry out a bit. Um, and then we come out and we hit it for a couple of nights, pushing all the pigs back out into this never, never country. Now, it's worked because they've all pushed back out. And we've, we've caught a few with the dogs and whatever, but predominantly when you hit them, they all run back this way. So you're sort of using, using um, I don't know, I don't know what to say. You're sort of trapping them twice, I guess. But you're pushing all the stragglers back out in the never never and then you're forcing them to walk back past your trap. Now, there's a main pad just here. There's another one back up there. And I'm sort of, my trap's in between both of them, right? So what we've done was as soon as I noticed, I'm just pulling up away from the trap here now. Just turn it buddy off. But once I noticed, the um, pigs starting to walk back through and that, like I got a couple of cameras up, uh, well, only on the trap that is, but you know, come out to bait the trap up and I see them walking through here. I'll just get out and have a bit of a look. The wind is blowing its hole out. Listen to that. Listen to that, that's just crazy. But it's a pad here and they either come in, you'll notice when you're trapping them, is they walk out of the, out of the pad up to the trap they're not coming out right beside the trap. So there's a main pad back here. There's a couple along here. But this will only work if you're doing this, you know, there's a pad there, rub, few rub marks there. But this will only work if your situation like I am in, where I can put, you know, I've got like a half a moon sort of area in this bottom block here, where they all pad through and they all push through into other blocks. So. If you've got a situation like that, beautiful guys, use it to your advantage just like I'm doing now. You don't really want this. See how it's all shooting up? You don't really want that. So um, I'm not gonna disturb that. I'm just gonna leave it, but I'm gonna put new grain out, new fermented grain. Now, good, I uh, don't see any, any sign here that's, you know, not unnormal. Don't see any like real running marks, like they've spooked or anything. I don't see anything like that, so that's good. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to bait this up and leave. Um, I don't want to put too much scent around and that sort of stuff, especially when it's been raining and that sort of stuff too, because these are new pigs. I'm not familiar with these pigs, so the trapping process will start over now. So I don't know if these are real shy pigs. I don't know. So what we do is we just sort of get in, get out, and just leave it at that. But they've been padding here. I can smell the pigs, so they've been hanging around. The pigs have been hanging in the cane here. So what we'll do is we'll just bait this up quickly and, and we'll just see. We'll see here's another pad. Look, they've just made another pad closer. This is another pad I haven't 
seen this one. Another pad there. So what we'll do, we'll just bait this bastard up. We're just using a three grain mix here. A three grain mix. And purely all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just showing everyone that there's other ways to trap. Like, we've got the trap here, we've got it set, all good. But you've got to push them to it. Like, you can't be moving a trap around every few days. You can't be doing it or spending heaps of money on putting all these different grain sites around, you know, spending all this money. Because sometimes cockies just won't help you with it. You're only doing it for your own, own, you know, own joy. So this is one way for, for um, other hunters to, you know, trap more pigs. But look, if you've got a bit of grain and you've got a bit of extra time, by all means, do it the other way. Put grain sites out everywhere and you can move the trap around, you know. Same, same, you're gonna, you know, trap as many pigs. Righto, guys, I gotta tell you something. I got asked a lot of questions about how, well, what's going wrong with my traps and all this sort of stuff, all right? The biggest thing is when it comes to trapping here on the coast is food. It's so hard to get them to eat, but once you do, you have to commit. You have to commit. Condition them. Condition, condition, condition. Keep feeding them. Whatever you got them feeding on, keep feeding them the bastard. Second thing is don't rush into it. Don't rush. Let them feed. If you've got to let them feed for a week and you've got 20-odd pigs coming, well, then do it. Let them feed. Let them feed. Third thing is bigger the better, especially if you're using trigger traps here because you get five or six come in and you're doing all the right things. You're letting them eat, you're conditioning, and you've got them all. You say you've got eight pigs coming to it, and you think, oh, yeah, beauty. Righto, I've done all the right things. I've done all the right things, and I set the trap. And what happens is you might only get four or five in there, and they have a bit of a fight. Knock the trap, bang. There's three, you know, you've, you've trapped half of them, and the other half from the outside. You've instantly taught them pigs not to ever go on that trap. And, and out west... Look, they mightn't worry about it because food's so much more scarce there, but here on the coast, nah. Then, then people will say, oh, but if I build a flat door in there, they'll go in there. Crap! They won't. Not here on the coast. They won't do it. I'm in two minds when it comes to little square box traps. If you have something like a little trap, right, a little square box trap you can float around on your ute, if it's done correctly, they're great. They work well, and... Me, as a hunter, I think, all right, well, there's only four or five pigs here. I'll set my little box trap up. No dramas. A lot of people use them incorrectly. Oh, there's 20 pigs coming in. I'm going to use a little box trap. Bang. Just a waste of time. You've just taught them. There's a, a, other issues is, is all your other farms, if there's people out there that are hunting on them and that are trapping as well and using that mechanical style trap, that's an issue. Is because are they doing it correctly? Are they dropping on, you know, a couple of pigs and teaching the other ones? That's the problem, guys. We used to use trigger traps all the time before we started building these. We never had that drama. We, we'd always try to condition them. And if we couldn't, and there was a couple on the outside, what we'd do is we'd bring the dogs in and smack them pigs. That's just what we'd do every time. And used to work, you know, we used to get a good, good strike rate, you know. We used to get a good strike rate because we'd use our dogs or we'd come in and shoot the other ones off the trap. And back in the day, we didn't have cameras, you know? So a lot of the time, we would be winging it. We'd be just going off the cuff, you know? We'd be doing that. And that's why we conditioned our traps for so long. And we made big traps. That's why, because we couldn't see. We couldn't count the pigs and we'd just wing it, you know? But nowadays, there's a, there is a bit of technology around with like cameras and that sort of stuff, and you can count your pigs. The thing people have in their heads is, is like, oh, they're going to keep going in there. They're going to keep going in there and they're going to keep wanting to be with their friends. Pigs are not like that. Pigs will sacrifice other pigs to get away. They don't give a shit. You know, they're not going to keep going in there for that little much grain because they know how much grain's in there. They think, oh, well, that's only a little bit. You know, when I've got all this here, and the neighbouring blocks, neighbouring blocks there, they're not, they're not going to get sucked into that. They're just going to go in, have a feed and go out. If the trap closes... That's it, game over. You might as well move on. But when you do catch 100%, you can keep your traps here and push pigs to them or bring them back here if there's new ones coming. As long as you're doing 100%, you're laughing. Hey, guys. Well, I'm just at home. I've just dropped on um, some pigs. Looks like there was a couple in there. So, look, it's wet weather. has been set in for a few days now. So I got a chance and I took it. And that's the name of the game is... 
if you get a chance, a half decent chance, take it. Because at the end of the day, they might only be little pigs, but they all grow up to eat and they all give you a pain in the ass, especially when you're using your dogs and that around the cane. And look, you're helping out the farmer because you need to catch even the smallest pigs because they all grow up and they don't take long to grow up either. Anyway, let's go out and check them out. Righto guys, well I've just come out to the block here. I've got the dogs with me tonight. We've just trapped some pigs um, and it's been raining. It's been raining for a few days and it's it's been, um, it'll be wet. So purely and simply why I got them out is just to make sure that I've got everything I've been chasing. I'm pretty certain I have just going by the cameras and stuff that i got set up around the trap. I just want to be sure that there's no straggler like lone boars or anything like that getting around that are just a little bit away from the mob. So we'll just make sure and um, we'll hunt the block out. That's what I reckon. But anyway, we'll get down and check this trap out. Oh, there's plenty of kids out with me to have a check in the trap. What do you reckon? Good. Got a couple, you reckon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> bloody oh. Bloody running the bloody traps with the bloody kids. There'll be 100, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> bloody oh. The old girl wasn't too happy about the whole situation. I just broke the news to her. She said, she goes, we're going for a back and hunt, are we? Well, now you mention it, we might just have to run the block out. What do you reckon about that, you winking bar? Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah. I don't know. What have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Might be the biggest pigs, but they're out of the way. Saves me when I'm hunting around these neighbouring blocks. Dogs spend an hour or two in the cane chasing that. I can get on with things chasing bigger pigs that are doing a bit more damage. Name of the game is use your dogs where you can. When you get frustrated and you need to do a job for a farmer, you need to really start cleaning up some stuff, is use your trap. Because I'm telling you now, no, no $2,500 plus dog box is going to get you country. Not like a trap. Not like a decent trap like these. They'll get you country. I've never ever heard of someone coming up to, me, to anyone and going, oh, geez, mate, that's a nice dog box you got on that bloody ute. Hey, how's about you come and hunt my country? You must be good. Word of mouth is what gets you country. And if you can keep continuously catching pigs with your dogs and shooting them and that sort of stuff, and you can continuously trap like we do, that's what gets you country. And that gets you more country because word of mouth is everything when it's in the hunting industry. We finished up, we, we run a couple of bloody neighboring blocks in this block and we didn't get a jump. So that's really good for the farmers. Pretty much pig free at the moment. Not to say that more won't move in the next couple of days, but for now it's wet. We ain't gonna get around here hunting much longer anyway. So I did a quick loop around tonight, no jumps, so that's good. That's really good. No piggies. They're a bit upset, they don't like that when I, when I get the trap out. But then you just gotta catch little shit. I'd rather catch it in the trap and you catch the big ones. This is one of our little um, custom traps we do for hunters. Um, to fit perfectly on the back of a ute, even a twin cab. Cellular technology. And look, they might look small, but used correctly, they, they're psycho, mate. They, they do the damage. So they get comfortably four or five pigs in here, no dramas at all. And some hunters just are looking for that, especially in these high food bowl areas. So if you want a trap like this, get onto us on our website or chase us up on um, social media. But these are our panels, but we do all sorts of traps. We, we're not just stuck at just this. This is a four panel trap. This is what I like to call four panel because it's one, two, three, four. My recommendation is a six or an eight panel. Get a lot more pigs in there, a lot better. But anyway, guys, check us out and hope you enjoy this video because we get some action. I'll show you how to set this baby off. Righto guys, well that's how they trigger. A couple of seconds and bang, you dropped onto pigs. 
used correctly, this little this little trap will do some damage on any farm or for any hunter. But guys, this is our standard trap. This 2.2, perfect for utes. Pile them on a twin cab or whatever you like. And um, an eight mil mesh here, but we can make this any size. We made, we've made deer traps, we've made all sorts of traps. We can make them higher, smaller, wider, whatever you like. Just get onto us and I'll sort you out from there. But if you're handy, you can just buy the control box and rig it up yourself. You can buy all this stuff off our website or you can get onto me and I can send it up to you. But a lot of people ask about service. Well, that's no drama because we put, you know, aerials on them. We can go bigger, smaller, higher. We can use satellite. So when people ask me, is reception an issue? No, it's not, because we'll sort it out. You just let me know where you are and I'll sort it out from there. Right, this mesh, this is eight mil mesh. This is like a Rio style mesh. We, we zinc treat it and that sort of stuff. And it's just a good, cheap option. For, for panels it's just a great cheap option and it's strong as strong as but we can use duragal mesh six mil duragal whatever you like guys so get on to us but we recommend this because it's just a pig trap at the end of the day and you don't need a rolls royce